We're ready to start our second method of integration. We've already learned u substitution. Now we're going to move on to our second method. And later in the course, we're going to build a whole library of methods to be able to handle all sorts of different integrals. For now, our second one is called integration by parts. And we'll start with this example here, where we want to integrate x times the sine of x dx. With what we have so far, you could try using u substitution on this one, but pretty quickly you would find yourself getting stuck and there's no way forward because this one doesn't fit the pattern of one of the basic forms of integration with something more complicated replacing x. In other words, it doesn't kind of look like a chain rule problem for derivatives. So u substitution isn't going to work and you could try it and try it and try it, but it won't work. So we need a new method, and this is integration by parts. If you're thinking about when to use integration by parts, first of all, after you've done a few examples, it'll be easier to tell when to use one or the other. But just like the u substitution method was useful whenever you would look at a function and its derivative would look like it would need the chain rule, in the same way, if you look at something like this and its derivative would need the product rule, in other words, it's the product of two functions rather than one nested inside of another, think integration by parts. So it's a rough analogy between the chain rule and u substitution and the product rule and integration by parts. So here we can see we can kind of split this into a product of two functions. We have x and we have sine of x. And that's a good starting point. Now, what I'm going to do next is going to require a little bit of explanation. But I'm going to label x as u, and I'm going to label the rest of it as dv. Now, again, that doesn't make a lot of sense just yet. But stick with me for a minute, and I'm going to show you how this will help us integrate this function. Integration by parts is built around a formula. And I'll show you the formula here. It won't make as much sense as it will after we've developed it, but the formula looks like this. The integral of u times dv equals u times v minus the integral of v times du. Okay, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense just yet. But if you notice what we're doing here is somewhat similar, at least in theory, to u substitution. We're substituting new variables u and v into this problem. Now, it may be hard to see from this formula, but what we're doing is we're taking the original integral, which is u times dv, right? That's what I've done by defining x as u and the rest of it as dv. Now, notice that the dx is included in the dv. Stick a pin in that, we'll come back to it in a little bit. So we've taken the original integral, u times dv, and it turns out through the use of this formula, what we end up with is a related integral that's the integral of kind of the reverse, v times du. So we'll have to figure out what v and du are in just a minute. But why are we doing this? Why do we do this approach? The idea is if integration by parts is going to work on an integral, this first integral will be somewhat of a dead end. But if we apply this formula, this integral we end up with will be one that we will know how to do. That's the general principle of integration by parts. And again, this doesn't apply to every integral. It just applies to a certain class of them, but at least the ones that we can do in this class. If you notice a product of two functions, try to think about if integration by parts would be helpful, and it's a good approach to try. So the general approach is we're going to define u and dv, and then we'll find what v and du are, and you may already be guessing how we're going to do that, but we'll save that uh, for just a minute. And once we find those, then we'll plug everything into this formula, and this second integral will be one that we know how to do. So that's the general structure of one of these problems. But before I go on and actually show you that, I do want to show you where this formula came from, because I don't like to just drop formulas in without any sense of why they work. So we're going to develop this formula. And it turns out that it's easy to kind of get lost in the algebra of what I'm going to do in a minute. But the 
origin of it is kind of based off that idea that when we look at this original setup, we're thinking it looks like the product of two functions. And so thinking back to just that basic idea that the integral is the antiderivative, let's try thinking about how we would differentiate a product. And then it turns out from that, if you rearrange things just the right way, you can come up with this formula. So I'll show you how that works real quick. If this following discussion doesn't make a lot of sense, if you don't remember how to develop the formula, that's okay. The important piece is to remember the formula because that's what gets used every time we do an integration by parts problem. So we're going to start with the product of two functions, which we're labeling u and v. That shouldn't be too much of a surprise because there's u's and v's all over the place in this formula. So we'll start with this product. And if you remember from Calc 1, the product rule says that we would take the derivative of each one in turn and multiply it by the other function and add them together. Something like that. Which means, if that's true, the integral of the right hand side must equal u times v. Right, if the derivative of u times v equals the right hand side, the integral of the right hand side must equal u times v. So now we can rearrange this a little bit. We can say u prime is the same as du dx. So we have v times u prime or du dx plus the rest, but I'm going to split this up into two integrals. So we'll have that the integral of that first part plus the integral of u times dv dx equals u times v. Now here again we're going to use one of those little tricks that technically to be completely precise we shouldn't be doing um, but it illustrates the point for us we can cancel the dx's here. Again from a strictly analytical sense uh, we're not allowed to do this, but it does work and the result is true. Um, it just is a dangerous step if you don't know what you're doing, but for our setup, this is totally fine to cancel these. So once we cancel those, we end up with the integral of v du plus the integral of u dv equals uv. And you should already be able to see how this is going to lead to the formula we have in red at the top of the screen. We can just rearrange by solving for the integral of u dv. If we subtract the integral of v du from both sides, we get to that formula. So again, this kind of looks like we're just messing with symbols, we're rearranging things, but it's important because it allows us to rewrite a hard integral in terms of another one that may be easier. More specifically, it will allow us when we do these problems to take an integral we don't know how to do immediately and re rewrite it in terms of one that we do know how to do. And so we'll be able to solve problems using this formula. So we'll do examples with this. And for now, the du and dv might seem kind of confusing but think back to what you did with u substitution and we've kind of gotten used to the idea of du, this differential, the same principle will apply here. And so when we get into examples, you'll see just how this works. But for now, just recognize that we're going to take a problem like this, that's the product of two functions, one of them will get labeled u, the other one will be part of dv, and then we'll apply this formula and then integrate that v du on the right side. So the approach is fairly straightforward once you get the hang of it. It's very consistent from one problem to the next. So there's nice kind of systematic process you can follow, which helps uh, so you don't get stuck in the middle of a problem. So we'll pick up with examples in the next video and we'll see how this formula gets applied.